Voice failed. It just not working. <clears throat> oh, well, we'll just have to go home. Okay, well, uh, we have this very lovely environment to have our meeting in today. Thank you, Worley. I assume you're responsible. Um, and those of you who don't have an eat fewer, well, you're missing out. Um, okay, so uh, to no one's surprise, we released Animesh this week. So that's really cool. Um, and uh, we have four four things in release that will get uh, more more updates uh, to get the Animesh merge done. So they'll all be appearing uh, over the next several days uh, but of course next week is a short week us we have uh, linden has thursday and friday off for the us thanksgiving holiday uh so it and lots of people take vacation around that so it may be a little while before we get every all the other release candidates updated and tested enough to put back out again um, but they're they're gradually all working their way through that pipeline. Um, we also have the Bakes on Mesh project viewer, uh, the support for which is now grid wide on, on Agni, although it'll probably be getting a couple more updates, uh, but it should work uh, anywhere. The project viewer should work anywhere once it's out. Uh, and of course, we have the EAP, uh, the Enhanced Environments Viewer, um, which produces all these very cool effects if you're running it and if you're in one of the test regions, which this is one of. Um, and I think that's grid wide on a DD now. Or, uh, and if it isn't, we can certainly steer you to places where it works. Um, and the 360 snapshot viewer still exists, and we're keeping it up to date, but we're not actually working on it at the moment because EAP, is, EAP and Love Me Render are consuming all of our rendering cycles. So, um, so that's all happening. Um, and moving forward, trying to get things done before the end of the year. Um, and let's see, uh, the, uh, I had the question at the bottom of the page from Kada about the, um, unreliable delivery of group notices. I do actually have somebody digging into the various backend systems. It looks as though the ones that are not getting delivered are not getting, it's not that they're not delivered when you log in, it's that they're they're not making it as far as the database that has things to be delivered to you when you log in. So we're we're having to sort of work our way backwards and figure out where they're going. So um, we'll 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 diagnose that and then see how hard it is to fix. Um, but we haven't quite gotten to that yet. But I do have somebody assigned to look at it, which is. You know, first step. No, you're not going to get a flood of old notices when we fix that. They're, when they're gone, they're gone. Uh, 
Uh, the way the way that works um, to address the next question um, indirectly um, in a, what an an EAP region that has an that has uh, an EAP environment configured will try to take that environment and do the nearest approximation it can for the old settings mechanism and deliver those to to older viewers. Um, that's always going to be imperfect in several ways because some of the parameters you just, there isn't anything for. Um, and can you... Uh, I don't know how much... They, they, they may be stars. Um, I don't. I don't know how much the uh, effort we're going to put into making that backwards compatibility perfect because um, it's really just for the transitional period before viewers pick up support for for EAP. So uh, hopefully that won't take long once we release it. Yeah, something's something outside has got my dog worked up. Sorry about that. She's anxiety ridden. Uh, so I guess that's all the news I have. So the floor is open. Uh, nothing, no, no issues to raise. You guys are too easy on me.
Uh, bug Splat, we think we have the last of the installer problems worked out. Um, and, uh, well, so the, the, the thing that's changed, there are two things that are changing in, in the bug splat release, two major things that are changing in the, in the bug splat release. One is that we'll start doing our bug, our, our crash capture and reporting using bug splat. Um, we're going to leave the old code in place with a build time option of whether or not to build it. Um, so, um, if you're, um, if you're going to keep trying to use the brake pad code, that's fine. It's still going to be there. We're just not going to run it. Um, the other thing that's changing is that we're, um, getting rid of the Python parent process that launches the viewer and making it a child process to do the updates. As, as a child process and we and we in the process fixed in the <laughs> along the way we we improved some of the handling of child processes um, and communicating with them which is kind of a neat capability to have added um, on the inside uh, doesn't make any difference to users directly um, so there will be some differences in how the updater works um, that will get rid of uh, some problems with multiple icons and things that, that kind of plagued that attempt to manage the viewer. Um, so that's uh, that. That is is going on. The Windows version will, um, if you try to if you try to run the installer as a non-admin user, um, it will. Uh, not try to ins it will not ask for privilege escalation or an admin account. It will instead just install the viewer as a personal install. Um, so you'll get it installed into your personal um, applications directory instead of into the, into the system applications directory. Um, which means that if you've got multiple users, the other ones won't see it, um, and they'll all have to do their own updates. But um, if you run it as an admin, it will behave the same as the existing one did. So uh, it's, uh, that's a that's a different thing. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't think we we want you to send our your crashes to us. Um, So uh, that's the that's the other change that'll be coming in that release, um, and hopefully we'll get a new build of that out beginning of next week. Um, to no one's surprise, we won't be doing any major updates next week. We're going to basically be in a no change window for most of the week. Um, Bakes. Break some mesh, you know, we're, we're tweaking some little bug fixes. There's a, there's an issue that came up, uh, when we merged the animesh code over one little behavior change that needed to be made. Um, but, uh, otherwise it seems to be pretty much on track. we we'll, we should have, um, that out for testing shortly. An updated version. Uh, is there any way we can allow you to view your own crashes on the? No, they don't have. They don't have it. The only way we could do it is to set up. We all we can do is let people see all all the crashes or none of them, um, and uh, we we can't we can't let you see all of them because they have personal information from other users in them. Yeah, the um, bug splat, the next bug splat viewer will fix the two dock icons problem. We'll be back to just one. That's kind of annoying. 
uh, I think you'll have to, you, you might have to delete the, if you've pinned them to the doc, then you, you'll have to delete that by hand. Since we don't run an installer, we can't fix that. Um, but there'll only be one icon and it will be the one for the viewer itself. Yeah, if, uh, if you've got a crash on our viewer that you would like to get symbols for, uh, well, we can give them to you. Uh, the symbols are actually in a public S3 bucket. So we can, given, given a, a viewer version number, we can give you the links to the symbol files for them. Well, it's, it, we'll have a we'll have an update to the bug splat release candidate viewer, um, hopefully beginning of next week, and that will solve the two icons problem. And my hope is that we can promote that one fairly quickly because it doesn't have a lot of functionality differences. The only real differences are in the updater at this point, or the updater and the crash logging. Yeah, sorry about that, Worley. That was not it was not intentional that we made those URLs obscure. They just ended up that way. Uh, we have not tried to do anything to clean up duplicate calling cards yet, although um, we have a task queued up to to fix that in the um, fix inventory transform, which is a 
which is the thing that the uh, that support can run if you're having a problem with inventory, and it'll it'll clean those up. We've we've found that people organize their calling cards in a lot of different ways, and uh, so we've kind of hesitated to mess with them. I mean, I've never tried to organize my calling cards at all, and I've got a ton of duplicates. So There's yeah, well, there was a on there. There was a bug for a while that, that has since been fixed that created duplicates. Uh, but once they're created, they just hang around. Uh, unfortunately, calling cards are one of those things. And we've got more than a couple of examples of them in Second Life that that began with one concept in mind and uh, then evolved to be used in other ways. And that ended up causing them to have some sort of weird behaviors. The code wasn't consistent in different places about what the expectations for them were. We've mostly got that cleaned up, but the legacy is duplicates and a slightly weird folder structure. I, th I think that it's still possible to end up with creating duplicates if you have errors in loading your inventory uh, and then you open some your friend's window and, and you can still get them. That is, if they, if they weren't created, then you open your friend's list, uh, I think you can end up creating new ones. And then, of course, eventually that will be duplicates. It's a little bit, it, Beck, that's an interesting idea, but it's it's the sort of thing that I, I, I don't like giving people tools they don't necessarily understand the limitations of. Um, and right now, it's, it's not sufficiently bulletproof. That is, if you, well, I don't want to get into it. And there, are, there are circumstances under which it's unwise to run it. Yeah, there are, as we have demonstrated again and again, there are limits to what you can do about introducing new features and making them fully backwards compatible. It's our, it's our secret plan for how to get everybody to keep their viewers up to date. Just keep introducing features that don't work on old viewers.
Um, does does do do any of you know what the what your hopes are for when to do a firestorm release that has animation? Okay. Try to avoid the holidays, please. I don't want people getting paged on their holidays. The Linden Lab holidays. Those are the ones to avoid. All right. Well, uh, it seems to me we're, we've run out of new topics. Unless somebody's got one, we can call it a day early. Thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, we will have a meeting two weeks from today, and then December is going to be pretty thin. Uh, because I'll be doing some traveling, and uh, we may not we may not have probably won't have much to say because we're not going to be doing uh, very many fewer releases in December. All right, see ya.